Hi there. My name's Tyler, and I run a website called lessannoyingbusiness.com, where I just uh, kind of give tech tips for small businesses. So in this video, what I want to do is show you the simplest way to make a website. Uh, this entire video, I'm going to make the full website in this video from start to finish, so it really doesn't take that long. To do this, we're going to use a tool called Card. Card is, in my opinion, the easiest way to make a website. The main limitation is every website you make on Card is just a single page. So if you need like a blog and a bunch of different pages and stuff like that, this isn't going to work for you. But for the simplest small business websites, this will get the job done. You know, you just put some information on a page, the, the visitor can scroll through and look at it all. It's just very, very simple. Um, okay, so let's dive in here. I am on Card's website here. And uh, getting started is really straightforward. You just click this Choose a Starting Point button. And you don't even have to have a uh, like a, a, an account made or anything like that. You can get the whole website set up before you sign up for an account. What it shows you here is just a bunch of different templates. So if you tried to design a website yourself, unless you're a professional designer, it probably isn't going to look super professional. So whether you use Card or another tool, I recommend picking a template that a professional designer made and just tweaking it a little bit, um, because the more you tweak it, the less likely it is to continue looking professional, right? Um, so there's a bunch of different things here. You can kind of see some of them are really simple, like this one here doesn't have all that much info on it, um, whereas this one has more text and stuff. So you can just look through and say what style fits with what you're looking for and what just kind of like layout and the amount of content fits. And you're going to be able to customize it, but you want a good starting point. Now, some of them have this uh, thing that says pro on it, that means you're going to need a paid account to use those. You're almost certainly going to want to pay either way, but don't worry, it's super cheap. It's $20 per year. So uh, it's basically the cheapest website hosting you're going to find, $20 per year. Uh, so I would just like go into this saying, I'm going to pay. That way you can use all the pro features and you don't have to agonize over it later. Um, so I would, I already have an account set up, but if you didn't, when you clicked on this, it would kind of tell you, you need to start a pro free trial. You get a seven day trial. So you can get your whole website set up before you commit to it. But uh, once you do that, you go ahead and hit select. This is the template I'm going to use. So again, you might use a totally different one, but this is really simple and I think a good one to work with. Okay, so if you've been following my guide uh, for like how to set up a, a website, you already know this, but if you've, you're seeing this video without any other context, just so you know, like what I would recommend doing before you start setting it up is you need four key pieces of information. What are your colors? If you're going to have a logo on your website, you want the logo. Uh, what is your call to action? That's the main thing you want people who visit your website to do. And then what are the main pieces of information that your website visitors are looking for? So hopefully just if you don't already have that, take a second, pause this, write that down. Colors, logo, call to action, and other info. And having that all set up in advance is going to make it a lot easier to create this website. Okay. So let's start, uh, I'm just, it kind of sets you up with this basic template, but we need to tweak it to fit what the content and the brand that we want. I'm going to start by just uh, editing this image to have my logo. So in Card, the way it works is you can just mouse over stuff and click on it, and it pulls up this area on the left, which kind of gives you the options. So for the an image, the main option is, well, what do you want the image to be? So I'm going to click Upload here, and I kind of had this logo generated for less annoying business. This isn't my real logo, but it's just something I threw together real quickly for this example. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crop it to the size I want and click accept. And there you go. It throws the logo up there. Uh, doesn't look great because the colors are off, but we'll, we'll get there. One quick tip. A lot of people make their logo way too big. Uh, I know it's tempting because it's like, this is my brand and I want my brand to be everywhere. But people are not coming to your website to stare at your logo. You probably want it there uh, so that they know where they are. They know what your company's name is, but they're probably here for the main content on the page. So I'd make the logo smaller than you might think. Um, OK, so the next thing you want to do is put some content in here. And you want to keep it really simple. You don't need to tell your life story here. Just what does the customer really need to see? Um, I'm going to act like I'm making this website as a uh, kind of a, a uh, landing page for this course that I'm making about how to make a website. It's very meta uh, and self-referential here. So the low-tech guide to setting up a website uh, is kind of the title that I'm going to use. You know, you want to pick a title that will kind of draw people in and entice them. And then in this template, we've got this secondary text. Not all of the templates have this, but um, I'm going to say this 20-day course will tell you everything you need to know to get your website set up. Um, but that's the basic idea. You can click on stuff. It gives you these options, and then you can just fill out the options. 
Next up here, we have this kind of form that people can fill out. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, so I'm going to skip it for now. Um, before we move on to design and stuff like that, I want to show you how to add more stuff. So they're going to like start out with some text you can edit. But if you want to create more text that they didn't give you, it's really easy. Uh, let's say I want to get rid of this. I'm going to click on it and then click this little delete thing here. So it's gone. Great. And then let's say I want to add some more stuff. You click this plus icon up here. And you can add a bunch of stuff, uh, especially if you're on the pro version, which again, I would recommend. Uh, you can embed widgets, forms from other sites, all kinds of stuff, uh, videos, images, all that. The container is a pretty handy thing, especially if you want columns. So if you want to break your page into multiple columns. So I'm going to add a container. And when you add something, it just throws it into the bottom of the page. And then you can click it and drag it up. And by default, the container doesn't do anything. It's just empty space. But the main option is, do you want it to just be a, like a full width container? That's the default. Or I'm going to set it to be columns. So now I have a right and a left column. And I can adjust you know, if I want one to be bigger than the other. Now I'm going to add text to go in those columns. So sometimes it doesn't add it where I want it to. Um, no big deal. Just drag it over to where you do want it to show up. And then you know I could fill out whatever information I think my website visitors are going to want to see. And you can, I mean, this can get way more complicated. You could spend hours doing this if you want. But you know, I'm you know just what six minutes into this video, and I've already got the basics of a website set up. So you can do this pretty quickly if you want. OK, so let's say we've got the content where we want it. Next step is getting the style to look a little bit better. Again, you can tweak this a lot, but I'm just going to suggest some simple stuff. One is your company has colors, and you want those colors to be front and center. This blue color, this is not my color. This is just what the template came with. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And um, I've got in this other window, I'm copying and pasting my main green color. This is kind of going to be my main brand color here. Um, so that's cool. Uh, it blends in with the logo nicely. So I'm feeling good about how that looks so far. Um, I feel like this text is a little big. Like I think it, uh, this template assumed I was going to have a, a shorter title than I have. Anytime you click on something, there's this little paintbrush icon up here. And the paintbrush icon is just like defining what it looks like. So for example, if you want to make the image smaller, you click the paintbrush and change the width. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I want to make this text smaller. So I'm going to click the text, go to the paintbrush, and just reduce the size a little bit until I feel like it looks good. You can also change the font and do all kinds of other stuff. Um, this text is like a little greenish. My secondary color for this uh, website that I'm making is this kind of purple color. So here's a really, really light version of the purple. I don't know if that actually looks good. I'm actually colorblind. Don't tell anyone. But uh, let's say I, I'm just going to go with that. Um, OK, so and yeah, you can tweak the colors of the text, the font size, all that as much as you want. All right. Now I want to talk about the most important thing on your website, which is the call to action. If you've been following my course, which I'll, I'll paste a link to that below, you already know this. But the call to action is the main thing you want your website visitors to do. This depends very much on your business. Maybe you want them uh, to schedule a time on your calendar, in which case you might link, you might make a button that links off to a Calendly link. Maybe you want them to fill out a form. Maybe you want them to, uh, I don't know, come into your physical location, in which case maybe you just put your address here and say, come on by. Um, but the call to action is the number one thing you want people to do. So since I'm making a website to try to get people to join my course, what I probably want them to do is give me their email address so that I can email them the course. Um, so if I click on this form here, there are a few different options. So again, I could have made it a button or something like that. But if it's a form, there's a contact form, which just takes their name, email, and a message. And then you can get back to them. So that's really good if you're a consultant or a real estate agent, something like that. They fill out the contact form, and then you can get in touch with them. The sign up form is uh, going to put their email in a different tool that you have. So uh, if you use an email marketing tool like MailChimp, or in my case, I use ConvertKit, you can select that. There are some instructions you're going to need to click on to read. I, uh, since there are a million different ones here, I'm not going to go through the exact details. But for ConvertKit, I basically need to get my API key and my form ID and paste them in here. Um, and then you can say, when they fill out the form, I just want to display a message that says, thank you. You, know, you can kind of set this to whatever you want. So I'm going with this form, this sign up form. You could go with a contact form, a button that links to an external website, or just something like, 
a message like, hey, come into my store, uh, whatever your call to action should be for your business. Okay. So this is, uh, obviously in your case, you're probably going to want to type in a little more stuff down here, but this is basically a website we've got here. I, you know, it's not going to win any design awards, but I think it's a pretty professional looking website. So now it's time to just make it real. I'm going to go ahead and click this save icon here. Um, if you don't have an account at this point, it's going to ask you to sign up. It's a piece of cake, just, you know, email address and password. You can give your website a title. So I'm going to call it LAB for less knowing business. Um, a description, learn about the technology your business needs to run smoothly or whatever. Uh, okay. Next up, if you're doing the free version, you have to publish to a .card.co URL. So I could make it like lessannoyingbusiness.card.co. If you have a business, you absolutely don't want to do it that way. Like you want a custom domain where it's, you know, yourname.com or something like that. Uh, so that's the main reason why I was, would suggest paying the $20 a year is to get that custom domain. Um, I'm going to make a separate video. I'm not going to get into it right now, how to buy a domain name and all that. But if you have a domain name, these are the instructions for getting it set up. And so you could just say like lessannoyingbusiness.com. Uh, and then I need to go make some changes with my domain registrar. That's whatever uh, service I used to buy the domain. So again, I'll have another video uh, for that on lessknowingbusiness.com if you want to check it out. Um, because I don't, I'm not actually going to set it up right now. I'm just going to use their temporary one, um, and I'm going to call it LAB test, less annoying business test. All right, that's available, and I will publish it. So literally, we're 11, almost 12 minutes into this video. We're done. The website exists. I can go to labtest.card.co, and uh, it'll work. So let's see here. I'm going to copy the link address, paste it in. Boom. This is a real website. It has a real sign-up form. Anyone anywhere in the world can go to it. The main thing I haven't done here is I would want, again, my own custom domain instead of this .card.co one. But that's really the only difference between this and a fully functional business website. So 12 minutes, that's how long it takes to make a website for your business. I hope you found this helpful. If you're not already taking my course on how to start a business website, um, I'll put a link below. And that's going to really uh, not just go into the technical details of how to set this up, but it's going to talk about how to get a logo made and how to figure out your call to action and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and uh, let me know if you have any questions. See ya.